Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today uh, is our lesson number 94. The, the 3094, 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 94, we are on page number 300 and we are dealing with the concept of Venn diagrams. Today, in the context of Venn diagram, we'll discuss uh, the topic of triple counting. When do we encounter triple counting? Triple counting is where we encounter when we are dealing with uh, something or somebody, whatever it is that, is that happens to be the member of a set, uh, that possesses three different characteristics. But let's start first with the simple concept of double counting, which we have already learned, obviously, we have already encountered many times, but let's do it one more time very quickly here. So here we have 10 students, we have 10 students, and we are told that six of them study French. And we are told that eight study Germans. Eight study Germans. Well, if we add up six and eight, we get 14. Six plus eight is 14. But we only have 10 students. How come we have 10 students but we add up when 6 people are taking French and 8 people are taking German? How is that possible? We have 4 extra people. Well, we have 4 extra left over because we are counting 4 people twice. We are dealing with double counting here. 6 plus 8 is 14, but the actual number, actual number of students is 10. 4 are being double counted. They are being double counted because these four people, are, we are counting them first as the students who are taking Germans and we are counting the same four people again as number as the students who are taking French. They go here, in the middle, they are taking both. And as soon as we put a figure there, we have to go back and adjust these two figures. Six is going to become two and eight is going to become four. In other words, two students are taking only French, four students are taking only German, only German, and four are taking both. That that four is the double counting. Very simple, very simple concept. How do we how do we deal with triple counting? Let's take a look at it. We can continue with the same example. So we have ten students again. We are told that we have ten students again, of which we are told four study French, five study Germans, and six study Spanish. And we are further told, they have to tell us one more piece of information. We are told that exactly, exactly three are enrolled in two languages. Question is, how many are How many are taking? How many are taking all three languages? So they are telling us that exactly three are enrolled in two languages. They are telling us, in other words, that exactly three people are going to be double counted. They have to tell us that in order for us to figure out how many of them are triple counted, which is what they are asking here. How many are taking all three languages? That's another way of saying how many people are how many people are we going to end up triple counting? In order for us to figure that out, we must know how many are being double counted. They have to tell us how many people are being double counted. And they're telling us here that three people are going to be double counted. Let's see what can do. And since since the problem tells us that nobody is taking neither, I should, nobody, not neither, because there are not two languages, but there are three languages. They're, they're, because they are telling us that nobody is taking any of these three languages, everybody is taking at least once. In the problem, they will tell us, even though I did not write it down here, but that's another caveat that you have to put here, that all of these ten students, everybody is taking at least one language. Because otherwise, otherwise you would have a universal set, and if we had somebody who was taking none of these three languages, that would go here. But we are not dealing with... I did not write it down, but it's there. I'm telling you verbally that there is no student who is taking none of these three languages. At everybody is taking at least one of these three languages. Every every one of these ten students is taking at least one of these three, so not three, three languages, so nothing goes here. So here we go. The three sets first. 
French, German, and Spanish. Four, five, six, well that makes it easy. Four, five, and six. Now, we are told that exactly three, exactly three are taking, exactly three are taking two languages. Exactly three are taking two languages. In other words, three are being double counted. Where do we put those three? Well, it's up to us. We can put it here, we can put those three here, and adjust these two figures accordingly. This four will become one, and this five will become two, because these three are people that are in French or German. Or we could have put, or we could have put, or we could have put the three here, and this was four, and this was five. If you put three here, then this five would become two, and this four, six will become three. It's up to it's up to us. We can put it anywhere you want. We can put it anywhere, anywhere we want. So let's just make it interesting. So we have four, five, and six. Now three people are taking two languages. We can show. We can put it, all three of them here, all three of them here, all three of them here as people who are taking French and Spanish. Or we can distribute the three anywhere we want, two and one. So let's just keep it simple. Let's make one student study French and German, one study German and Spanish, and one study French and Spanish. Let's adjust the figure. As soon as we put a one here, one student is taking French and German, and one student is taking French and French and Spanish. In other words, two students are out of these four, these four is going to become two. This five is going to become three, and this six is going to become four. Let up, let's add up all of these figures and see what we get. Let's add up all of these figures and see what we get. I'm going to erase this part here because we need the room. So exactly three are taking two languages. We have done that. The question is how many of us are taking all three of them? We have to figure out what goes here. We need the room, so let's erase it. So in this scenario, two are taking only French. Three are taking only German. Four are taking only the way we set it up here. And one is taking French and German. One is taking French. One is taking French and German. One is taking German and Spanish. And one is taking French and Spanish. Let's add up these figures, shall we? We get one, two, three. Three plus three is six. And six plus six, four plus two is six. Six plus six is twelve. We get twelve here. But we know that the actual number of people we have is only 10. Actual number of people. This is the actual number of people. But we, when, we, when we add up these figures, we get 12. We have an overflow of 2. Where is this 2 coming from? This is where the difference lies between double counting and triple counting. In the case of, in, in case of double counting, listen very carefully. In the case of double counting, whatever figure that we were left here at the bottom, the overflow, we knew those were the people who were being double counted. Here we're talking about triple counting. So this two represents, this, this two represents, this two represents, this two represents the fact that one person, one, only one person is triple counted. One person is being triple counted. I hope you can read that low. I don't know how low it can go. For example, for, ex for example, let's do it here. Let's do a very simple scenario. Let's do a very simple scenario. X, Y, and Z. I'm going to count how many people we have here. Okay? Let's, let's start. Let's count how many people are there, shall we? Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I come up with five. I come up with five. How come I come up with five? I came up with five because I counted this person three times. Actual number of people, as you can see, is only three. The number I came up with is five. I have an overflow of two because these two that I counted should not have been counted. That tells us, this two tells us that one person, one person should have been counted as one, but he was counted as one, two, and three. We have an overflow of two. Overflow of two tells us that half of that figure. Overflow of two indicates that one person is counted triple times, three times. An overflow of 15 would have indicated that five people are being triple counted. An overflow of nine would tell us that three people are being triple counted. 
you understand after we have after we have already taken into account as to how many people are being double counted we have to know that information first so there we go that two tells us that one person is being double counted same thing here we have a leftover of two that tells us that one person is being triple counted one person is being triple counted that one person goes here and now we are done now we are done now It should, so as soon as we put one here, as soon as we put one here, we have to go back and adjust all of the figures, one, two, three. We have to take away one from here because this one person is, one of these two people were taking French, now we are claiming that one of those two people is actually taking also German and Spanish. So this two, we have to subtract one from it, this have to subtract one from there, subtract one from there. And we have to go back and adjust all of the, all of the figures. How many, how, many, how many people are taking only French, not two? But one. How many people are taking Germans? Not three. Or should it, this should have said one. We are subtracting one from it. Not three, but two. How many people are taking only Spanish? Not four, but three. And how many people are taking all three? Answer is one student, and that that should now add up to number of number of actual number of people that we have, which we know we are we were told in the beginning were ten. So it better uh, adds up to ten. One, two, three, four, five, and two plus three is five. There you go. Since the problem told us from the very beginning that there was no students who was, who was taking uh, none of these three languages, they have to tell us that. There we go. Now let's do something complicated. When we say, when we claim that we are about to do something complicated, I hope you understand that that's a big fat lie. It's not complicated, it's just bigger numbers. That's all it is. Nothing changes. All the concepts are still the same. We're just dealing with different numbers. That's all, bigger numbers. Because in the exam, then I just give you 10 people. Okay, so let's, let's do it. So let's see what happens here. We have, we are told that we have 120 students and a group of 120 students, 60 we are told study French or other 50, 60 study German and 80 study Spanish. It says, no one studies They have to tell us, in the problem like this, for us to be able to figure out, for us to be able to figure out, as we said before, how many people are being triple counted, in order for us to figure that out, we must know how many people are being double counted. They have to tell us that. And here they're telling us that there is nobody who is being double counted. Because no one is studying exactly two languages. There are no, there is not going to be anybody in this scenario who is being double counted. Some study, they go on to say that some study All three, obviously that's the whole point. Uh, some people are being triple counted. And the question is, how many study all three? How many people are being triple counted? Let's do it together, shall we? Tell you what, this time, this time, we're going to give a little twist in it. Not only we will solve this problem with Venn diagram, but we'll also solve it without the Venn diagram. How do we solve a problem such as this without the Venn diagram? Well, the answer is very simple. We solve it with algebra. We can solve it algebraically or with Venn diagram. Which one would you like to do first? 
Should we do Venn diagram first or should we do algebra first? Let's do algebra first just to make it interesting. How do we solve it algebraically? This problem. Let's start, shall we? So here's the solution. And of course, once we finish solving it algebraically, we'll begin to appreciate the power of Venn diagram because Venn diagram can do the same job much quicker in a much simpler way. Algebra takes going to take some time. That's the beauty of Venn diagram. Let's do it algebraically first, so we are able to, so that we are better able to appreciate the power of Venn diagram. But here's how it goes: the solution algebraically. So let let x represent let x be the the number of students number of students who study exactly one language. X will represent, what does X represent? It represents the number of students who study exactly one language. Let Y represent the number of students who are studying exactly two languages. And let C represent the number of students who study exactly three languages. In other words, in the context of our problem, we are saying that y, quantity, unknown quantity y, represents the number of people who are going to be double counted, and z represents the number of people who are being triple counted. But we know that all of these people, people who are taking only one language is exactly, people who are taking exactly two languages, and people who are taking exactly three languages, it should again say, it, well, again, I did not write it down out of laziness, out of sheer laziness, I did not write it down, but in the problem it will also tell you that nobody in this scenario is taking none of these languages. In other words, everybody is taking at least one of these three languages. Of these 120 students, everyone is taking at least one, one language. I did not write it down, but it's there. In other words, the number of students who are taking only one language is exactly one language, the number of students who are taking exactly two languages, the number of students who are taking exactly three languages, has to add up to the total number of students that we have. Of course. Obviously. I'm going to rewrite this language, this equation a little bit further in, so I have room, so that we have room to write the next one. x plus y plus z equals 120. Now, Let's move on and understand, I'm going to erase this part. Let's understand that when we add up these figures, 5 plus 6 is 11, 11 plus 8 is 9, 190. 190. What does this 190 represent? Why do we have 190 here, even though the actual number of students is only 120? One more time, listen to the question carefully. Why do we get figure of 190 when we add up the number, when we add up the actual number of students who are taking, who are studying Spanish, who are taking space, studying German, and who are studying Spanish? We just ask them uh, how many of them are taking French. If we, if we look at the roster and we see how many students are taking French and how many students are taking Spanish and how many students are taking German, we, we come up with figure of 190. But we know there are only 120. Why is that? How do we represent that? The reason, the reason is very simple. It's because somebody is being double counted and somebody is being triple counted. How do we express that idea in the language of algebra? How do we express the notion that we are getting 190 because some of, them, some of them are being double counted and some of them are triple counted? How do we write in the language of algebra? In other words, how do we write? What's the language of algebra? Language of algebra is an equation. What's the equation for it? Well, the equation is very simple. The number of people who are taking one, only exactly one language, x represents the number of people who are taking exactly one language, they counted only once. They only counted once because they are taking only one languages. People who are taking two languages, y number of people are taking two languages, and they are being counted twice in this figure. They are being double counted. And people who are taking exactly three languages, which is z, z number of students are taking exactly three languages, and they are being counted three times. And this figure will add up to 190. Still with me so far? As you can see, it's a lot of work to do it algebraically. And then we'll do it in Venn diagram. Venn diagram is going to go like that. So, let's move on then. We, I erased it, but we were also told that in this scenario, 
No one is studying exactly two languages. I erased it, but you know it's there. No one is studying exactly two languages. Well, that's our why. Why, in this case, we are told, is a big fat zero. No one is taking exactly two languages. We know the value of pi. They're given. They have to give us, they always, they must always tell us how many people are taking, are being double counted before we can figure out how many people are being triple counted. If we do not know how many people are being double counted, it's impossible to figure out how many people are being triple counted. Do you understand? Here we are told that y is equal to zero. Let's put it in here and let's pick up some speed. So we're going to get y is equal to zero, which means x plus z is equal to 120. Or if you want to show all the work, if you want to show all the tedious work, we will put down x plus 0 plus z equals 120, which means x plus z equals 120. I'm not going to do the same thing here. It's just x plus, well actually let's just do it, 2 times 0. y is 0, 2 times 0 plus 3z, which is going to give us x plus 3z equals 190. This is our equation 2, this is our equation 1. Let's put down equation 1 underneath it here because we're going to subtract. Because we're going to subtract equation 1 from equation 2. This is equation 1, we're going to subtract this equation from that equation. Since we are subtracting it, the very first thing we must do is to change the sign. This is positive, it's going to become negative. This positive is going to be negative, and this positive is going to become negative. Let's do it in a different color so we can see it. This positive that we see is going to become negative, this is going to become negative, this is going to become negative, because we are subtracting it. So let's see what we can do. x minus x is, is going to cancel out, that was the whole point. 3z minus z is going to give us 2z. And 190 minus 120 is going to give us 70. If 2z is equal to 70, z must be 35. Follow. That's it. Z represents the number of people who are being triple counted. The question was how many people are taking exact how many people are taking all three of these languages? The answer is 35. Now let's do the same thing in Venn diagram and we'll see how much faster it goes. Remember, we were told that no one is taking two languages. I'm going to rewrite this thing here so we can see x plus y plus z equals 120 and here 1 times x plus 2 times y there we go so here is our Venn diagram French, Spanish and German and of course we have universal cell outside but since no one is taking no languages in other words we are told that of these 120 students everyone is taking at least one language outside is zero because there is nobody in this scenario of 120 who is taking none of these three so that's there 50, 60, 80 50 is fair in French, 60 is and then 80 okay watch what happens and since since nobody is taking exactly two languages we know the figure for this thing is zero this is zero, this is zero so I'm not going to actually put down zero because it looks silly but we know it's zero because we are told there is nobody here who is taking exactly two languages. So let's, let's add up these figures. Okay, 0, 11, 190, but the actual number of people are 120. You have a difference of 70. This 70 represents, this 70 represents, that's it, we're done. That's how quick the Venn diagram is as opposed to doing it algebraically. This 70 represents the 35, 35 people are triple counted. 35 people are triple counted. So 35 goes in here. These 35 people uh, possess three characteristics. They, are, they possess three characteristics. These 35 people are studying French and German and Spanish. As soon as we put a figure here, we have to go and adjust all of them. So to subtract 35 from 50, it becomes 15. In other words, 15 people are studying only French. This is going to become 25. 25 people are studying only Spanish. And 80 minus 30 would have been 50. So 45 studying, 45 people are studying only German. And now if we add up all the figures, it will add up to 120. It should add up to 120. Let's do it. Where can we do it? Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. 
Now, if we add up these figures, it should add up to 120. 15, 15 is only French. 25 is only Spanish. 45 is only German. And 35 is all three. 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 20. 0, carry 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, and 2 plus 6 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, you see? There we go. But that's how quick the Venn diagram is, as opposed to doing something algebraically. But it can be done algebraically. It can be done algebraically, and sometimes the nature of the problem is such that it has to be done algebraically, because Venn diagram gets quite messy and quite confusing. But we needn't worry. But we needn't worry, we need, we need not worry about it, because those complicated scenarios you're gonna, we're not going to encounter on the GRE. On the GRE, they keep it very simple. You're going to have a simple scenario of double counting, and a very simple scenario of triple counting, and that's the end of it. You just have to master the basics. Tomorrow, we'll do the last two problems in this, in this topic, the topic of Venn diagram, number, number 9 and number 10. And then we'll move on to the new topic, and the next topic is going to be... Let's see what the next topic is going to be. We are on page number 300, so let's turn to page 300 and let's see what the next topic is going to be. So we, after, after the Venn diagram, oh there we go. Uh, next topic is another topic that's very important and sometimes people find it confusing, which is the topic of permutation and combination on page number 301, the very next page. And we'll pick that up day after tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do the last two problems, as I said before, problem number 9 and 10. And then day after tomorrow, from day 96, from day number 96, we'll do permutations and combinations, and perhaps we'll make five lessons on those as well. I think I'll make five lessons, five videos on it, from 96 to 100. Okay? Bye now.